Hello everybody. This is money. This is currency. There's a flow about it. It might flow from product to service or paycheck to bank or bank to service or person to person. The point is it is always moving and when we get it we have one chance and one chance only to give it, save it, or spend it. And what we need to do is be proactive versus reactive with our money. Otherwise, you know what? It'll slip right through our fingers. Have you ever gotten a tax refund or bonus and have no idea where it went? The bottom line is that we need a plan. Thanks for joining My Money Wellness. This first session is one of the core elements of getting you started on the road to really true financial wellness. This isn't a bunch of hype and cute sayings. This is proven stuff that works. We're going to be talking about three things. Emergency fund, budgeting, and how it all applies to you. But first, let's give you a little bit of overview. We work too hard for our money. Do you know how much money flows through your hands? Well, at $49,445 per year as the average household, that equates to more than $2 million if we work from age 20 to age 65. We should all be able to retire with dignity and have choices. Winning financially means different things to different people and it triggers different emotions. Think about and define what winning financially looks like from your perspective. Unfortunately, our society has painted a different picture of winning financially. I'm Stanley Johnson. I've got a great family. I've got a four bedroom house and a great community. Like my car? It's new. I even belong to the local golf club. How do I do it? I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I can barely pay my finance charges. Somebody help me. Why are we laughing at this commercial? Well, because it hits home, doesn't it? Let me tell you a little story. I was in line at McDonald's to get some lunch, and I was parked about two or three cars behind a Suburban. Bright, red, shiny car. Oh, I'd love to have that car. And I got to thinking, hmm, I wonder if it was paid for. Well, I got my answer pretty quickly. He pulled up to the window, put some plastic out, the cashier took the plastic, and I was thinking, okay, it's almost my turn. Well, the plastic came out, and where was the food? Instead, another plastic went in, came out, another plastic in four times. And so I got my answer to whether or not that car had been paid for. Probably not. And that's what happens. We can't afford a car, and we have to finance hamburgers. You know, and I'm sure some of us has done that. I know I've done that in the past. You know, it's those small decisions that add up to this big debt. The average household has $38,000 in consumer debt, and I was certainly an overachiever in that category. 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. And you might say, well, I live in an upper class neighborhood. Well, yeah, your statistics are 80% of those neighbors are living paycheck to paycheck. And 92% of us are losing sleep over finances. Here's the sad one. Money fights are the leading cause of divorce, according to abcnews.com. And based on those statistics, wow, it seems like you can't win with money. And that's not true. In Dr. Thomas Stanley's book, Millionaire Mind, he says that discipline is the number one character trait of people who win with money. And discipline is not fun, it's painful, but it's worth it. It's kind of like physical fitness. When it comes to losing weight, we all know what we need to do. We need to eat less. We need to exercise more. And the same is true with money. We know what to do. It's just a matter of doing it. Dave Ramsey, he says that at the end of the day, winning with money is only 20% head knowledge, but 80% behavior modification. And we're going to provide you the head knowledge and we're going to provide you also with some tools to help and encourage behavior modifications. And you'll have several opportunities to begin to change your behavior. Uh, hello? Oh, oh, you're kidding me. The car battery is dead? Well, we just, we just spent, we don't have any money left. We just paid all of our bills. We said we're not taking it out of savings anymore. All right, this last time, and this has got to be the end, go ahead and put it on the credit card. Oh, wow, how many of you have made or received this phone call? Well, the behavior we need to change 
is how do we respond to these financial emergencies? Sometimes we immediately take money out of savings if we have it, but most of us, when we have those emergencies, if we're not prepared, we put them on the credit card and then we incur debt. Well, that's not what we're going to do anymore. That's one of those behaviors that needs to change. An emergency fund is a category within a budget that sets aside dollars for unexpected expenses. And before we find out how to handle these budget busters, we really need to know what they are. We're all walking around thinking we'll never have a car repair, we'll never drop a cell phone, we'll never have a sick kid. And when we do, we act like it's some kind of big surprise. The average car repair today is over $305, and medical bills are the number one reason that most people file for bankruptcy. But how would it feel to have funds set aside for emergencies only? How would you feel? Would it feel like you had a little bit of room between yourself and life and these emergencies? So what we recommend is $1,000 into an emergency fund. It'll cover most issues. And for those of you with no debt, you can move right along and have six months of living expenses in your emergency fund. It's a little different when you don't have to rely on credit cards, overdrafts, family. You simply pay the bill with cash. That's empowering. So it's worth doing. But here's the sad reality. The National Credit Counseling Department says 64% of all Americans do not have $1,000. That's two out of three people near you at work or church or at school. Now, just for clarification, here's what an emergency fund isn't. It is not a vacation fund. It's not, I'm too tired to cook, let's go out to eat fund. And it's not padding in the checking account because we know what happens when we have that cushion. It'll get lost, we'll go an impulse on something we really want versus really need. But what is an emergency fund? Well, it needs to be in a separate account or in a cookie jar or in a savings, somewhere in the drawer. It's not pad in your checking account. You might accidentally use it. It is protection from stress, and most importantly, it is for emergencies only. And you know what? When you have an emergency fund in place, you'll get a sense of peace, and your stress level will go down. It'll go from here to here, and you'll be able to breathe. You'll have some pad in life against emergencies. So. How do we get that emergency fund started? One way is to go through doing a budget. Buckle in, get prepared, and get ready to tackle the budget.